dive into the unseen realities of the Akosombo and Pong Dam spillage impact. Pregnant women embark on long boat journeys for antenatal care, while the spillage engulfs hospitals, public toilets, mortuaries and cemeteries. The Ghana Health Service warns against contaminated water, yet children find joy in the face of adversity. The story is a grappling narrative of strength, resilience and the untold stories of those affected. It all began on September 15, 2023, when the Volta River Authority, VRA, initiated controlled water spillage from the Akosombo and Pong Dams. Dam spillage, spillage of excess water. Comprising north, south and central. Parts of the eastern and Volta regions in Ghana grappled with severe consequences from the Akosombo and Pong Dam spillage. A crisis that displaced thousands of indigenous people and prompted urgent calls for a thorough investigation. The Akosombo Dam, boosting a vast storage capacity of 150 billion cubic meters and a maximum operating level of 276 feet, has been a vital hydroelectric power source for Ghana. Yet, the impact of climate change marked by increased rainfall have elevated water levels beyond the dam's capacity. Faced with the looming risk of dam failure, the spillage which began at a discharge rate of 183,000 cubic feet per second later escalated on October 9, 2023 in response to the ongoing rise in water levels. Downstream areas near the Akosombo and Pong dams faced extensive flooding affecting communities in South Tong, North Tong, Central Tong and Esujaman. Thousands of residents experienced submerged homes leading to widespread power cuts. The Great Kosap station in Fievi, Sugakope in the Volta region was flooded resulting in its shutdown. The absence of electricity impacted public installations, endangering lives in hospitals like those in Sugakope and Adidome. Mepe is a town that once thrived. Now, it finds itself submerged. Lying on the bare floor for hours, 12-year-old Joshua Soduhu is a vivid representation of the dire circumstances in the town. He has been battling a stomach ache and during two days of relentless vomiting. No money to my mother to take me to the hospital. In an emotional statement, Joshua shares his home has been swallowed by flood waters from the Akosombo Dam spillage, leaving him and his mother financially destitute. I have no money to take my child to the hospital. The water has carried all my belongings away. I need help. The once bustling town is now a silent witness of the profound impact of the environmental crisis and its vulnerable residents. Their plight is just one among many. As dawn breaks, the story unfolds. Gagbeto Avi, a 69-year-old farmer, stands as a symbol of countless others stripped of everything by the unforgiving floods. In the silent aftermath, his only solace is the fragile bond with his children, the last flicker of hope in the wake of the devastation. Yet, the haunting truth reverberates. Yet, 
My house has collapsed and I don't know where to go from here when the water recedes. It's a big worry. Babies and children are not spared in the devastation. I am sure that you watching at home can clearly tell how dangerous this is, not just for the residents, not just for Elizabeth, but also for the kids on the canoe. I am afraid. Why are you afraid? But the water is, the water is here. Then I am afraid. When we put them in the boat, and then they they were not able to control themselves, and then they fall in the water, they can die. Driven by necessity and dredge and fear, these young learners have no alternative but to undertake the perilous journey in pursuit of education. The classrooms are now makeshift homes for flood victims with each room accommodating 20 people. A temporary tent for the victims adds to their discomfort due to its plastic nature which makes the heat unbearable. Moreover, there are no beds and are scoring the challenge in living conditions they endure. It's too much to bear. The condition is terrible. You can look at the ground. This is where people sleep. Nothing to sleep on. You just lay your clothes and then you lie down. Five kilos of rice, two bags, was given to ten heads to be shared. So according to them, I will only take a cup of rice. I've been literally here for just a minute and I can tell you that the heat here is definitely unbearable. These are the only spaces created for ventilation, but I will say that it is not enough because I, I am actually not really comfortable here. Hello. The story of Mepes history, a sad chapter unfolds as the Akosumbo Dam's village affects communities. The strong homes are now underwater with just the rooftops peeking out. The usual sounds of daily life are replaced by the quiet flow of the floodwaters. Schools where kids used to learn and play are now beneath the murky water. Classrooms and playgrounds that were once filled with laughter are now silent really devastating. The Volta River Authority, which has a statutory responsibility to ensure that the lower Volta Basin is managed uh, according to law, has woefully failed. And this belated attempts to shift blame on uh, the Meteorological Services Authority and uh, others, others like, you know, uh, uh, residents failing to respond to move to higher grounds would not wash at all. The question is where are they going to move to? This pillage affected pregnant women hard, forcing them to travel long distances by boat for antenatal care. Two pregnant women face a journey filled with courage, challenges and a strong desire for essential care. They cross the first river, not too deep, a mere prelude to the two more rivers lying ahead. Keep in mind, those next ones are deeper. Arriving at the second river, they now require a canoe waiting at the banks to ferry them across the water. They embark on paddling the canoe alone. No life jackets, no protective gear, just the sheer courage of two mothers to be navigating the waters of uncertainty for the sake of the unborn children. From Achikope to Akukope, what used to be a regular trip for Agnes, Bedi and Naomi Asunda has become risky due to the overflowing rivers, a consequence of the Akosumbo Dam spillage. Undeterred, these expectant mothers embark on a canoe ride, hoping to reach their destination for antenatal care. As they reach the third river, luck smiled upon them when a kind fisherman offered to paddle them to the next town. Without a second thought, my cameraman and I joined them on the risky journey, driven by the emotion of solidarity and the shared quest 
for a safer passage. However, nature has its own plans. In the middle of the brave journey, heavy rain joins the scene. The once soothing sound of the rains turn into a symphony of challenges for these mothers to be. It is at the moment raining heavily and you can tell um, the difficulty most of these pregnant women go through here in this community. We still have a long journey ahead of us. These are the unseen stories here in the typical villages um, affected by the dam spillage. Really disturbing. This woman here is heavily pregnant. It is raining heavily as I am talking to you. And we have a long journey ahead of us. We started the journey before, you know, the rain started. And it is risky. It is very disturbing. It is dangerous. The serene atmosphere is disrupted by harmful reptiles, including snakes, emerge due to the flooding. Upon reaching the town, the health center stood closed, almost half submerged by water, rendering their perilous journey seemingly futile. I have not been feeling well for two days now. There's no money for health care and the hospital is closed. I haven't eaten since yesterday. The flood is not allowing us to go to the hospital or find food to eat. It's worrying for my family. Swiftly, we had to embark on the roughly 45-minute return journey once more. At this juncture, the shivered from the cold of the showers, adding sadness to the situation. It's crucial to know that their homes too have been submerged due to the dam spillage. Now, both of them reside in shelters that are far from suitable for their current conditions. This is where we sleep. The building is weak and can collapse on us. She indicated that her husband abandoned her and their five children and till now she hasn't heard from him. According to her, her husband said he was going to bring food and other relief items to them. But at the moment, it's just her and her five kids in this lonely abode. Their stories, though filled with difficulties, showcase the resilience that lifts in the face of environmental changes. Guided by determination, these mothers press on, navigating not just rivers, but the elements themselves, all for the well-being of the unborn children. In a statement issued on October 30, 2023, the Volta River Authority, VRA, announced the conclusion of the controlled spilling of the Akosombo Dam, indicating that it has come to an end. This was good news for the people in the Volta region, but I had to return to the affected communities to gather first-hand information on the aftermath of the floods. Embarking on a two-hour journey from the bustling capital Accra, Mepe still grapples with the aftermath of the dam spillage. With receding waters exposing the landscape of collapsed buildings, approximately 400 structures lie in ruins. Residents still seek sanctuary in classrooms and students absorb knowledge beneath the sheltering embrace of tree shades, anticipating a miraculous shift in their circumstances. Well, we have a team to conduct some uh, environmental and sanitation assessment and structural integrity test of the structures. Then we'll quickly move to decontamination. Confidence told you. A resilient 17-year-old junior high school three student found his home all submerged. The flood waters claimed his only haven. <laughs> Every morning, as he rises to get ready for school, a sense of hopelessness and brokenness shadows his every move. 
Returning from school, he discovered the harsh reality. His abode consumed by the unforgiving waters of the Akosombo Dam spillage. All that remained were the soaked remnants of his possessions. When we were, we were closed from school, when I came here, I saw that the, uh, here is full of our water. I feel difficult because there, there is no one can help me to pack my things. So I just try to pick uh, the things I need, but I find it difficult to pick them because uh, the way, uh, there was the, the level of the water inside the room is too high, so I, I find it difficult. Life has not been comfortable for 17-year-old Confidence Towujo after his grandmother passed on a year ago. And to make matters worse, his home was submerged after the Akosombuengpun dams were spilled. At the moment, the water has receded completely and you can still see some marks on the wall. And Confidence tells me that when he closed from school around 3 p.m. and got home and realized that part of his home was submerged, he had tears dropping down his cheeks. I've been able to have a view of where he sleeps at the moment and when you walk in here you can clearly see that the pictures or the leftovers of the flood waters are still very much visible here. You can see heaps of sun that are still here on the floor and this is a mat where confidence sleeps on. He sleeps here at night battling mosquito bites and this portion of his structure has totally been ripped off and this is as a result of the home that has been submerged or soaked in water for a very long time and because the building was made out of mud it easily collapsed immediately he got here and realized half of his home was submerged he quickly swam through the water into his room just to save his textbooks and school uniform and when he got here he was able to pick just a few of them the remaining ones at the moment are all wet as you can see and he tells me that it is going to be a big worry for him because he won't be able to gather money again to buy textbooks and mind you he will be writing his basic education certificate examination soon the reflection of his struggles resonates in the silent gaps of the dilapidated walls i need textbook, exercise books, finish my education because my, my parents are not stronger to help me so that I, to buy me my needs in schooling. Confidence does shoe repairs when school is closed to earn money for himself. Some people have been bringing their shoes that are torn, so I just repair it to them. So I take some money from them. That is, that is the place for me to get money to take care of myself. Each step to school, crutches under his armpits, becomes a testament of his endurance. A 45-minute journey beneath the scorching sun, mirroring the resilience within his spirit. He's a, a serious guy who always comes to school and he obeys too. Sometimes we, when the rain falls, the way to the school may not be good, but he might force, he always forced to come to school. Yeah. And he's one of the best too in class. I always feel tired. Taking car or motorbike to school. That can help me to school. Life is tough for him because his grandmother, who used to take care of him, passed away a year ago. In the face of adversity, confidence finds strength not just in his crutches, but in the unwavering hope that, despite the broken walls, and the weight of grief, he can rebuild a life torn asunder.
the parliamentary minority urged President Nana Ekufuado to swiftly address the resettlement of voter flood victims in the overlooked Taglemi State Housing Project. But their plea did not yield results. Our chiefs were appealing to the president when the president came here that if he could open Saglemi for our people to be relocated because they can't stay in classrooms, you know, for long. I mean, classrooms are not designed for res residential accommodation. Despite attempts securing a response from the regional minister, Archibald Yawo Lecha, on this matter has been unsuccessful. In Siko, another community in the region, nearly 300 homes crumbled, their roofs now resting on the ground in the aftermath of the devastating impact. <laughs> As the day's hassle gives way tonight, the harsh reality sets in. In their feeble compounds, the hang up mosquito nets, makeshift shelters, in the absence of homes. Unfortunately, no aid has reached them yet. Most of them do not have a place to lay their heads, so around this time, they gather at this point where they have good conversations just to hold body and soul together. At this point, you can clearly see that most of the residents here have mounted their mosquito nets with mats on the floor, with sadness drawn all over their faces. And this is what they have been doing for the past weeks after their buildings collapsed as a result of their Kosumbo and the Pung Dam spillages. And this is biting them hardly. You can see children children as young as two years old, three years old, who are seated here in so much sadness and in pain. And this is where they have been spending their nights. Even though they have mosquito nets to protect them, they still tell me that especially the kids do battle mosquito bites, especially at night. Some of them are falling sick. And this is really serious, a situation that is calling for an urgent attention. I woke up in the zone to come and urinate and before I get out from the room, I've seen that all my buildings have collapsed and when I turn back, I've seen that they are in the water. Yes, and in fact, it pains me, but I have nothing to do about this. So please, I'm pleading that the government will help me so that I can take care of my building. Because right now, I, I'm a student, I, I don't know how to like get money and build this thing again. This is where you are sleeping now. So we need help. We want them to help us now. We are here almost a month now. Dawn arrives and I find myself still in Siko. This community heavily depends on this river for essential needs like drinking, bathing and washing. The dam spillage submerged mortuaries, cemeteries, and even public toilets blending with the water. The Ghana Health Service issued a warning advising residents against drinking from these contaminated water sources. Despite the warning, the reality in Seko paints a different picture. Children are joyfully quenching their thirst for life, defying the challenges posed by the contaminated water sources because they have no access to clean portable water. Standing by Bletu in Siko in the Volta region, a lifeline for residents but now tainted by the dam spillage. Despite warnings about its dangers, residents continue to draw water from it, underscoring the desperate situation they face in the absence of safe alternative. The polluted waters tell a tale of resilience and the harsh reality of a community navigating through environmental challenges. Here in Siko, the residents, including children as young as five years, rely on this dam despite it being polluted. These children, as you can see right behind me, are trying to get water to take it home, either to quench their thirst or to use it to cook, bathe, or for other alternatives. I am here with a bottle to get a sample of the water, which I can tell you is not clear in the eye. Give me a moment.
Ordinary clean water should be colorless, but you can clearly tell this water is quite brownish in color, which clearly tells that it has been polluted or contaminated. But this is what these kids here, as young as five years old, drink in Seko to quench their thirst. This is dangerous for their health. I am here to fetch water for bathing, drinking and for cooking. This is the only water we have here and we are, we are pleading for the government to help us and the MPs as well and the district chief executive and those kind of staffs to help us, the NGOs, to intervene so that we can get portable water to drink. In the grip of hopelessness, the community looks up to the stars, counting on them for a glimpse of a brighter future. The hospitals, crucial for the residents' health care, including Kumbuni Hospital, have been shattered, leaving the community without easy access to medical support. We need to organize cleanup and make sure the environment is well uh, fumigated and then we can comfortably come back. This is the Komboni mortuary in Fievie in the Volta region. This morgue uh, made headlines when the Akosombo and Pondam spillage happened and half of it was submerged. At the moment, you can see the water is completely dried, but officials are yet to come in here to offer cleanup services to the mortuary. We have been told that most of the dead bodies here in the facility um, were moved to the district hospital and that was because uh, most of the dead bodies were submerged which could pose some public health issues so they had to quickly move some of the bodies to uh, the district hospital here in the Volta region. At the moment I am walking towards um, where they wash the dead bodies here and you can clearly see that the flood has caused damage to the facility. There are huge cracks on the floor and when you walk towards this particular area there are about three rooms here um, tiled up and all of that. From this room, when you walk ahead, there's also another room, and this is also a room where um, the dead bodies are being washed before they are prepared for burial here in the Volta region. At the moment, everything here is on a halt as a result of the spillages and also the flood situation um, that caused the damage here. But I have been told by the management that they are putting things in place to ensure that work will soon begin here to clean up the facility again. The condensers behind the, hospital, um, the mortuary, um, what some amount of water went into that. So we also have our engineer have a look at them after. If everything is set, then we can look at bringing back bodies and then reopening the place. The closure of the local hospitals has intensified pressure on the South Tong District Hospital in Togokope as patients affected by the floods experience worsening health conditions. The head of administration at the hospital, Samuel Omega, expresses concern about the escalating situation caused by the closure of local health care facilities. We have diarrhea-related diseases that come in, cholera that come in and all of that. Our attendance generally has increased over about 30% in, in attendance and so that has brought in some extra pressure on work. The health sector both directly and indirectly has been hit. Uh, I mentioned that uh, five of our peripheral facilities were flooded. Our outreach sites were flooded. A major hospital was flooded. Close to 200 of our staff were directly affected. We had to relocate them. Um, a, a essential health service delivery was disrupted. We, 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 we had over 6,000 children who were directly affected living in safe havens. These people have been, have been displaced. Water systems have been disrupted. Uh, uh, and and uh, we, we have to concentrate our resources in these areas so that we avert any public health disaster. So certainly we've been affected. As soon as we did our assessment and we realized that potentially 
there could be a health disaster. Uh, we had to quickly move from what we call the watch mode, where um, we always monitor the kind of diseases that they are, the numbers, into the alert mode. Back to Mafidopo, where pregnant women seek refuge in the aftermath of their homes being submerged. The haunting memory of her plight, pregnant and abandoned by her husband, with five children to care for, lingered in my mind even as I departed for Accra the last time. Contemplating ways to elevate her burden became a persistent thought. Agnes Bedi, when I arrived at her home, greeted me with more than just excitement. <laughs> In the heart of the Volta region where the spillage has cast a shadow of adversity, the challenges faced by pregnant women resonate deeply. I'm here through Media General's Three Foundation to donate these relief items um, to Vida, Agnes and Naomi, mothers-to-be, whose journey for antenatal care echoes the struggles of many here in the Volta region after the spillage of the Akosombo and Pung Dam. <laughs> My children and I rely on our neighbors for food and help. I really appreciate these items brought to us. Naomi, whom I joined on the journey with Agnes during my last visit, is now in labor and has been urgently taken to the hospital. One question lingers in my mind. How did she manage the journey there? Alongside her husband, Sifas Asunda, who had to board a canoe to reach the nearest major hospital, the primary destination for pregnant women to deliver and access general health care in the community. The lack of life jackets made the journey both tedious and nerve wracking Successfully navigating the largest river in the area, our journey persists. Now on a motor tricycle, the same laborious routine is endured by women in labor, highlighting the challenges they face in accessing essential health care. The moment has arrived, and Sefas is beaming with excitement and smiles. He cannot wait to hold his newborn child in his arms. They <laughs> Naomi recounts her challenging journey to the hospital, emphasizing that it was far from easy. I struggled when I was in labor. There were no means, so I had to walk past the first river. Later, I found a boat on the second river. Despite the challenges, Naomi finds excitement in the items brought to her through the Three Foundation. As the time to return approached, my mind was filled with apprehension about the impending daunting journey. Boarding the canoe, I found solace in saying a prayer for our safe passage. Sefa Sumbele reveals that individuals traveling from Afidopo and neighboring communities sometimes lose their lives during this perilous journey. This is how we suffered every day, every blessed day. When we got sick, we are not feeling well, we need to go to the hospital. This is what we normally pass through. Sometimes people used to die because of the time they were supposed to reach the hospital and they did not get them on time. It affected them. Returning to Afidopo, there's good news. Vidalogy has safely delivered and returned a week ago. Baby, I bought no free bands and I'm a better one. So, you know, so, but no, my nanti alcohol, but nanti me by. It was raining when I was in labor. I walked to the riverside, but there was no boat to take me across. Luckily, I met some boys who assisted me. When I finally crossed, there was no vehicle to take me to the hospital. Sustainable Development Goal 3, SDG 3, aims to ensure healthy lives and promote well-being for all at all ages. Health and well-being are important at every stage of one's life, 
starting from the beginning. This goal addresses all major health priorities, reproductive, maternal, newborn, child and adolescent health, communicable and non-communicable diseases, universal health coverage and access for all to save, effective, quality and affordable medicines and vaccines. While all countries have committed to achieving this goal by 2030, the implementation is lacking here until the government extends aid to communities in desperate need of health centers such as Afidopu, Achikope and Akpokope, many lives will remain at risk. After a month of residents being displaced, the government has allocated 220 million Ghana cities to support relief efforts of affected communities. Finance Minister Ken Oforiata revealed this during the presentation of the 2024 budget on Wednesday, November 15, 2023. We have requested funding from the World Bank under the IDA Crisis Response Window to support the resettlement of the victims, restoration of livelihoods, compensation and reconstruction of infrastructure in the affected communities. Despite the government of Ghana's apparent reluctance in addressing the plight of these victims, Ghanaians from various places, non-governmental organizations, companies and certain governmental bodies, including the World Health Organization, have demonstrated compassion by donating relief items and funds to alleviate their suffering. The events at Ghana's Akosombo Dam highlight a crucial environmental concern shifting the narrative from human ingenuity to the urgent need to address climate change. The dam's pillage has plunged Mepe into a struggle for survival, with submerged homes and communities in the Volta region facing heartbreak and challenges. The question remains, will the world unite to tackle the present issue of climate change? Godwin Asidiba TV3 Volta Region